you mentioned one that was always empty and always boring, and it was communion. Uh, taking part in communion and anyone that maybe might be listening to this podcast that wasn't raised evangelical or Christian communion is when you would during a worship session, normally towards the end of a session or towards after the the teaching, they would have a moment of communion with like two or three more worship songs. And then they'd have a table with a bunch of tiny cups of grape juice and a bowl of tiny pieces of bread, but it normally was lavash bread. I'm pretty sure. No, or it was uh oh my God, I can't remember. Communion the- bread. It was specifically communion, communion bread. bread. And it tastes like communion bread always tasted just like flat cardboard cardboard. Yeah. And then you just have a shot of grape juice and you'd go back to your pew while the worship is happening. And every time the goal would be you're about to partake in communion. And so you're going to take the blood of Christ. And you're going to drink it. And then you're going to eat the bread with the, the whole congregation. And, and it's supposed to represent eating the body of Christ. And it, it even even saying it out loud now, I'm like, what a wild ritual that we did so many, 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 many times. It was wild in the moment. But it felt it never felt real to me, ever. Not once did I ever take communion and be like, mm, moved, felt good. Jesus' blood, yes. Never, yeah. ever. Communion was perform it felt perform- performative. Performative. And like the feeling of getting out of that pew to walk up to the table to get your grape juice or the bread. And sometimes they'd pass it around. And every church is different. So if yeah. you know what we're talking about, you probably have your own version of what that was at the church. Um, but when you get passed around, I have vivid memory of the three of us sitting together. And you get passed to Zach. And they get passed to my sister, our sister, and they get passed to me. And Zach was younger, right? You're younger. So you, you do the thing and you kind of like follow everyone's or whatever. And then that my, our sister would like smile. She'd have this smile. Like she always like, because she never could. She always the biggest smiler. And I used to always look at her and be like, yeah, this is kind of like, I didn't really understand it, but it was like, this is hard to take seriously. Mm. And I think, she, yeah, I don't know if she's having a hard time taking it seriously, but this is kind of weird. Okay. Oh, we grape juice and a snack. And I was always like, can I get some more of the, you know, the crackers, please? Can I eat more? Can I just go? And that kids after the service would be like all over that, drinking all the grape juice. So it always just kind of felt like, I don't know. It didn't really land as much. Worship, definitely. Yeah. Worship was hands down one of the most, I mean, that's changed. Music changed our lives. Yeah. Performing it, being able to perform that ritual with our dad, you know, and our mom on stage changed our lives. Yeah. We transferred the ritual of worship into the, tr- into the ritual of trying to become rock stars. Yeah. You see, that didn't really work out so well. Yeah. Um, we were addicted. We needed to be on stage. We needed to be worshiping something. I used to compare rave music and going to clubs every weekend. Mm-hmm. Felt like I was going to my worship. Of course. I remember telling DJs I would meet, I'd be like, yo, your set was like worship to me. Yeah. So it was like I, I, I craved it, yeah. you know, some sort of everyone together, all bonding, all celebrating the same sound. Mm. So it transferred from like weird church stuff to like in the club, everyone jumping to the same. And I think that there's that's ritualistic, right? That's why it works. Mm.